En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Pueden sentarse. The Mexican historian Francisco de la Maza narrates that when the Spanish arrived to Mexico, they find several people in tribes, and some of them were very friendly, and some others were very aggressive. That was the case of what Juan de Grijalva in 1517 found in these territories where we live now, in the beautiful municipio of San Miguel de Allende. When he arrived, he finds Otomíes, Chichimecas, and Huachichiles. And they were tribes that were nomadic, nomadic. So they were not easy to find. They were not established in big empires or towns. They used to be in the bushes and the trees, waiting with their arrows. And when the, and when the Spanish crossed the territories, they will give them what they call matanga la changa, a blood called murder to them. According to the history, these people were never conquered by weapons or by armies, but they were conquered through the gospel. When the first missionaries came from Orapa and Michoacán, the first San Franciscanos arrived to San Miguel, they brought the gospel, and these people saw other pre-Hispanic people joining those frailes, and you know, probably the church in San Miguel el Grande still exists, the very first chapel built by Fray Juan de San Miguel. Out of these connections, a lot of syncretism and mixtures of religion and pre-Hispanic tradition arrive. Among those syncretism is the mixture of the Catholic celebration of the Triduum of All Hallows Day Eve, All Saints Day, and All Souls Day, with the venerance that these pre-Hispanic people used to have in honor of their deaths. They honor death so much that even now, Utsa, a town that is Focus in the state of Guanajuato, which is called right now like Misión Chichimeca, they still celebrate the visit of their deaths. What do they believe? They believe things such like they cannot step in the graves or the beloveds who have gone to the presence of God, because that will interfere between the connection of them and the living for coming every year. Also, they have, they have funny things, but one of them is that they believe that they come and scare people, in the special kids. And they do it because they want to be remembered, because they want somebody to light a candle for them, because they want to receive a prayer. All these Michichimecas missions, they will have the Sempasuchil flowers, and they will have the copal, the incense, food and drinks that the beloveds used to have when they were with them. It seems like people that go to the presence of the Almighty do not live forever or at all, and that to a greater or less extent, all the people of the world share this mysterious way of thinking. Today, November, today we celebrate the day of all saints that is going to take place on November 1st. A holy day for us as Christians. We commemorate all our relatives, friends, and loved ones who having completed their course on earth now reside with the presence of God. We remember all our sisters and brothers in Christ's faith who have stood out for their Christian virtues. St. Paul's call all Christian saints but some remain outstanding to us in memory. What a better way to remember all our saints than reflecting on the Beatitudes. That section of the Sermon on the Mountain that so deeply touches our souls and fills us with hope within the depths of our beings. The expression of faith we made at baptism can perhaps best be attained 
by following the instructions found in the Beatitudes thought by Jesus. This is the route that all the saints have endeavored to travel. Despite their limitations that as humans they know they have. In the Sermon of the Mountain, Jesus empties himself in love. Jesus describes to us the path we need to take. And what he's drawing in his sermon becomes a self-portrait of himself. In the Beatitudes, we learn that Jesus is the poor in spirit. Jesus is the one who suffers. Jesus is the humble. Jesus is the hungry and thirsty for justice. He is the compassionate. He is the pure of heart, the seeker of peace, the persecuted of, for reasons of justice. The Beatitudes are therefore a living portrait of Christ and they are offered to illuminate our faith so that we may be shaped by the principles and characteristics of a holy life. When Jesus emphasized the importance of being poor in spirit, this is what stands out. The need to maintain a stance as Christians that emphasize God as our chief treasure. This subverts our egos and diminish the attractions of the passions of this world. Poverty of spirit makes a room for God in our hearts and focuses us daily on the love of God with all our hearts, minds, and souls. What we hear in the Beatitudes is represented actually in the lives of the saints we venerate. If we want to understand each of the Beatitudes, we can grow in understanding by meditating on the lives of the saints. A favorite saint of mine is St. Ignatius of Loyola. I'm amazed with his life. This guy who was so vain and frivolous. A military guy who was perfect in the art of war and weapons. But the only reason he did it was for recognizing, for good food, for having females in their lives, for having recognizement. But what happened in war when this bomb exploded almost his leg? He was in bed and began to reflect that all the life he was having wasn't something that filled his spirit. However, we know that he wanted to be a priest. I mean, I tried to go quicker in his life. He wanted to be a priest. And people opposed to that idea. So many people opposed to that. But nothing stopped him as he pursued that goal. His early life of discipline and military responsibility served him in the achievement of an arduous spiritual goal. San Ignatius changed his life and began to experience so many consolations from God. Those caresses that we get from him when we hide our own egos and selves and begin to focus our lives to him. The Ignatian exercise served to experience the caresses of God and transform our way of being and think about the relationship between ourselves and God. St. Ignatius is an example of how to experience the Beatitudes in our daily and future lives. In Mexico, we are accustomed to go to churches and they are full of saints. There are hundreds of saints. It's almost embarrassing to say, who is this guy? Unfortunately for our church, we don't have that problem. <laughs> but in our churches, there are so many, and you don't know who is who and who did what. So it's a relief to have a day that we can celebrate and commemorate all of them together. Not only those who have been popular and prominent, but also those family members, friends, and acquaintances who, through perhaps anonymous, live pious and holy lives, despite errors and imperfections, from which no one is immune except Christ. We, to my, aspire to sanctity. Even Joe Whitmore, believe it or not. <laughs> Yeah. 
So St. Ignatius is a saint so near to my heart. But I need to say that my favorite, favorite saint, and sorry Mary Magdalene, my favorite saint is my Grandma Josefina. <laughs> Grandma Josefina, I actually humorously, I used to call her Abuela, usted es una santa every time she did something good for me, and she would reply una santa cabrona which which I won't translate okay and my grandma did so many beautiful things for me, she always encouraged me to be a nice human being in special there are so many histories that I actually share one at the 9th service. I'm going to share one with you at the 10th, 15th, and I'm going to share a different one on the Spanish service. So many things that I can say. But I remember the very first time I played the piano in front of an audience. I began to play when I was 23 years old, so I have not experience to play for an audience. I'm there shaking and all nervous, and my grandma comes to me and she says, what's happening? And I say, Grandma, I, I, my energy has gone. I'm completely nervous. And she say, Miguel, you play and play and play over and over and over at home. You play beautiful. Have confidence on you. But if you're going to be a coward, which actually she didn't use that word, she used another. But if you are going to be... <laughs> But if you are going to be a coward, make sure you do not invite me next time. <laughs> she pushed me in my spirit, and I did it. She died in 2017. I miss her so much. But through her experiences and lessons, I know she's still right here next to me. And the reason I try to have an example of the Beatitudes in my life is because one day I want to go to that true church where she belongs with God, where nothing matters but the truly and fully love we all are expecting by faith. So, which saints reflect the Beatitudes to your life? Who do you like to remember when you need some advice in the silence of your soul? Without a doubt, God is more than enough to receive consolation and affection. But fortunately for us, God has also given us the saints, who offer an example of how to live a life in holiness and trust in Him. The mystery of the communion of saints in heaven and earth teaches us that we are not alone in this temporal life, but surrounded by witnesses before God, who intercede in our lives, each by example and teachings, being in the lap of God. They are participants in an eternal life to which we are summoned, and which we'll, we will join at the end of our time on earth. We can actually begin to participate in this great festival now as we apply the teachings of the Sermon on the Mountain to our daily lives, practicing the Beatitudes and making ourselves a blessing for one another. Queridas hermanas y hermanos, the perseverance of the faith is strengthened by the communion of the saints. Therefore, we cannot just say he or she has died and is gone. Our departed beloveds are no longer linked to us. The reality is that our beloved ones remain attached to us. With their departure, the bounds of brotherhood are not broken, but rather strengthened. Because for us, they remain alive in God. A Mexican phrase that I love says, Our dead don't live in the cemetery but they live in the heart and in the, the remember of those who keep them in their hearts. I wish you a blessed All Saints Day and a blessed All Saints Freedom. Amen. Amen.